Hey you guys, what's going on? It's Dunbar Snackbar here with Game 4 of the World Series, which you guys have loved watching. I've loved playing it. Now I'm up 2-1 to one now. I'll still be at home here at Historic Wrigley Field. Of course, I'll be playing as the Chicago Cubs, going against the American League champions, the New York Yankees. If you haven't got a chance to watch the previous games, I'll put a link here at the end for you. Uh, to be able to go back and watch those as well because with any World Series there's a story that plays out in every single game. Andy Pettit is going to be starting off on the mound for me. This might actually work out pretty well because how many times do the Yankees go up against their own pitchers? I mean if you kind of think about that it's a little interesting but honestly it does not look like this is going to be a great game for Andy Pettit because the first highlight I get to show you guys is a home run by Mark Teixeira deep in the left field. Man, not cool. Yeah, I kind of thought, like, this might actually be a really good call. What are you doing, Andy Pettit? It's like a little jig. Doing some dance moves. Maybe some voodoo to try and, like, undo a curse or something. I don't know. Anyway, but, yeah, I thought Andy Pettit might be a good idea. But, man, this is terrible. Start off the game this way. I don't know. It still is the top of the first. So it's not like this is uh, close to the end of the game. I mean, I got plenty of time to come back. So... Anyway, fortunately for me, though, this is really the only thing that happens in the top of the first that's worth uh, noting here and kind of posting for this episode. Colvin getting a good hit in the left center. It's going to end up being a double for him, so that's not too bad. You definitely take uh, the first offensive production of my game being a multi-base hit. So, uh, like you saw, bottom of the first here, one out. So, I've got him in scoring position. I got two outs I can kind of play around with, may be able to... Get, uh, get a pretty good hit. Now, on the next at bat here, this fastball by A.J. Burnett. Yes, he's starting for the Yankees. He's going to be hitting the center field. That's going to allow Colvin to come around third and end up coming home. Yankees aren't even going to contest that at all. So the game is tied. That's the equalizer right there. That tells you how much FIFA I've been playing. Now, if you look at that winning percentage here for the chance of winning, it was all Yankees until uh, Tyler Colvin ended up touching home plate and getting the tie and run. So this was actually really, really big. And, I mean, not just big for that, too, but also because it kind of negates, you know, any influence from that home run. Shot down the left field line. This is going to advance my runners. Nobody's going to score, but I got runners on second and third now. So I am uh, now an even bigger threat to be able to score and to get the lead here on the Yankees. So A.J. Burnett recently got traded to the Pittsburgh Pirates, by the way. Yankees eating a lot of his contract, and a lot of Yankees fans are kind of excited uh, to see him go. Uh, had one of the highest ERAs of Yankee starting pitchers for some time. Really didn't do that great of a job. Just like right here, hitting Alfonso Soriano. Bases are loaded. This hit into center field is not going to go over the wall. Not even close at all. But it is going to be deep enough for Lamy to tag up and end up coming home. Now, you guys know that I don't think sacrifice flies are necessarily the prettiest way to be able to get a run. But at this point, it works for me. I got the lead now here. 2-1. to one, Still in the first two outs but again nothing too much happens now like I was saying yeah AJ Burnett got traded uh, one of the things about AJ Burnett uh, that's kind of important to note you know for the game here as well as in real life is he really only has two effective pitches which is a fastball and a curveball so I think with major league or when you pitch in the major league you need to have at least three pitches uh, I might even say four but I mean at least three really good pitches that you can go through because um, those two pitches, I mean, a fastball and a curveball, I mean, they're so different that it's kind of easy to read. And I think that's actually what's contributed uh, to A.J. Burnett's high ERA. Um, but don't get me wrong. I mean, things may be different when he goes to Pittsburgh, but we'll see. Anyway, strikeout here on the slider by A-Rod. That foul ball, that one would have been over the wall if it was just a, uh, you know, 20 feet more to the right. So that was kind of dangerous. Because he's done a lot of damage against me here in this World Series. So for me to be able to get that, that's pretty nice. Anyway, here we are in the fourth inning. Talk about not too much happening. But it's really been a lot of ground ball outs, a lot of high pop flies into the outfield that nobody has a problem getting under. Marlon Brown making uh, some noise here, getting the stolen base. That's the first stolen base of the game, of course. Man. That was kind of nice because I needed to do something to wake myself up here a little bit. So that stolen base was actually kind of huge. Hopefully it'll wake up the fans a little bit, but can't capitalize on that one either. Anyway, top of the fifth here, this pitch by Pettit. Ramirez diving for that one, getting the throw. What a good defensive play by Ramos Ramirez right there. And then later on, oh, smack into center field. 
by none other than Aramis Ramirez. So going from a fielding highlight to a hitting highlight. Man, this guy's all over the place tonight. Causing the fireworks to go out in Wrigley Field. It's not too bad. Spanning my lead here a little bit more. A.J. Burnett's kind of in trouble. Now, I'm really surprised, though, that offensively I haven't put up more numbers here against somebody who's only got a fastball and a curveball. Because even from my standpoint, that's kind of easy to figure out. Uh, who knows? Maybe, uh, maybe this will be getting something special for me here in Game 4 of the World Series. Maybe it will go up 3-1 to one here. Anyway, so after this here, we got some more good stuff coming. Bottom of the six. Oh, man, another home run. Left center field. Gosh, Carlos Pena with that one. Sixth home run of the postseason. Dang, dude, talk about hitting for power. All right, so if you're the Yankees at this point, I mean, you really got to get rid of A.J. Burnett. You know, I've got him figured out here. Back-to-back -back home runs. That's not cool. I mean, right now in the World Series, you really can't risk something like this. Go to your bullpen, Yankees. You got to. Anyway, but Carlos Pena getting the job done. Got a Ramos Ramirez hitting the long ball as well. That's really been the story of the Cubs all year long is their just ability to hit the long ball. So that, of course, expands my lead here a little bit. I'm starting to feel uh, comfortable. And the Yankees decide that, yes, they do need to go ahead and sit down A.J. Burnett, but they could not have made a worse call by going to Java Chamberlain. Like I said in game one, if there's any tendency that I have against any pitcher whatsoever in the game, it is I have a lot of success against Chava Chamberlain. So here I am getting pretty cocky, basically, and saying that this game is in the bag for me. I've got game four down. But a lot of baseball ahead. We'll take a look. We'll see what happens and all that jazz here. Plenty of, of video left to go here, and here we are in the bottom of the sixth. Get a base hit with this one. So... Maybe this is the beginning of what I was thinking is going to happen. All right, so Marlon Byrd going for second again. Is he going to make it against Jabba Chamberlain? Absolutely he will. I've stolen against Jabba so many times that I know that, you know, who I can go uh, and have steal and who I can't. Marlon Byrd's definitely one of the guys. It's, cl it's a close play, but he makes it. Anyway, two outs here, bottom of the sixth. We got a hit going into left field. Man, do I try and go for it? Nope. Runners on first and third. That's really all that happens, though. A-Rod up at the plate here once again. Now, Andy Pettit was somebody who I picked up at the beginning of the season. A lot of you guys really didn't get a chance to be able to see what happened at the beginning of the season because you guys weren't a part of the channel yet. I always go, no matter what game it is, to so the free agency at the beginning of whatever season, whether it be Madden, uh, baseball, whatever, see who's available because you can always build up your team a little bit, kind of going with somebody different. Andy Pettit was a good left-handed pitcher who was better than my fourth and fifth starter. So I'm like, let's go ahead and get this guy. Let's put him in. Now, he has gone, uh, I can't remember what his win-loss is, but he's you know has a losing record. So didn't end up turning out the way that I necessarily would have liked it to. But if he does all right here in the World Series, if he pitches his game and pitches it well, man, it'll, it'll all be worth it at that point because everybody else picked up the slack for Andy Pettit pitching-wise throughout the year. Man, this is kind of crazy. Pettit versus A-Rod. Man, who would have thought? Anyway, 1-2 pitch. Swing and a miss on the slider. A-Rod's going to be sitting down. That's going to be the first out for the top of the seventh. Man, it always feels good to be able to get that strikeout with A-Rod, especially the way that game one ended up playing out with him getting that uh, walk-off home run. Anyway, ground ball ends up getting into right field. Runners on first and second, so good hit by Castro to be able to get somebody in scoring position. No outs. 4-1 to one game still as we are in the bottom of the seventh. Hit up the middle. I'm going to try. I'm going to go for the run. It's going to be pretty crazy. Maybe a close play at the plate. Oh, man, I end up getting out. But you know what? That was Andy Pettit that was running. So I think if it was just about anybody else, we'd be talking about another run. Anyway, this one going into right field. All right, this time we're going to be talking about a run. Oh, man, Ramirez, what are you doing? Ah, he's in the pickle. A lot of times your players can't get out of the pickle. I go back to first, and I make it, so I'm cool with that. Five to one, bottom of the seventh on a really interesting play. I don't know what it is about MLB 2K11, but it seems like whenever you get a pickle, you just get a couple chances to go back and forth, and then you got to just jog. It just frustrates you to tears because there's absolutely no hustle from the computer. Anyway, high fly ball again into left center. I've got a runner on third, tagging up, going home. We're talking about one more run. Not bad. So I told you 
with Jabba Chamberlain being in the game, offense is going to be producing a lot. Definitely ends up pulling true in this one here as I'm putting up more and more runs all the time. Because you're going to have a hard time catching up. Bottom of the seventh, two outs. Alfonso Soro crushing this one. Just adding insult to injury with that one. The lead is even more in my favor. My gosh. Pitching has really killed the Yankees throughout this entire World Series, especially coming from the bullpen. Uh, it seems like when they bring somebody in, man, I destroy them pretty quick. Like I said, I'm so surprised that they put in Jabba Chamberlain for a game like this. I wonder if everybody else at the bullpen is just really, really tired or the computer really has that much trust in Jabba Chamberlain. Man, that was a good hit, getting two more runs off of that home run. I wonder if the Yankees are going to sit him down now. They got to smarten up here. Anyway, we'll keep going with things here a little bit. We'll, of course, show you if anything changes here. Andy Pettit. Here we are, top of the eighth now. So the Yankees get a hit. I know that is so uninteresting, but I feel like I really had to show something offensive-wise from the Yankees because just one run, Andy Pettit, actually doing a pretty good job. I mean, with that one fluke here at the beginning of the game, man, he's done all right, but the Yankees are starting to figure him out with another hit. Some runners on first and second. Andy Pettit is getting a little tired. I mean, the thing is with pitch count in the game, it doesn't mean as much as, as real life because I kind of take the Nolan Ryan approach to things where I'm not like, all right, after so many pitches, you're out. Plus, 74 pitches in the top of the eighth. That's ridiculous. Yeah, by the way, Nolan Ryan's all about if you feel comfortable and you think you're going to, I mean, if you feel okay and you're not doing a bad job, we'll keep you in until you say we got to go. But anyway, Yankees get a run off of that. I don't know. I might start warming somebody up here. Potentially sit down pet it. It's not like I'm worried, though. I mean, it is 8-2, to two, but at the same time, I am kind of worried because if anybody can get six runs in two innings, it's going to be the Yankees, especially when we're getting to that part of the lineup here, which is very, very potent offensively. I could see six runs happening here, especially with no outs whatsoever. And here's another run for the Yankees. So it is eight to three now. Runners on first and second again, still no outs. Yankees are getting a little dangerous. Man. So Robinson Cano's up next too. Man, this is gonna be crazy. All right. So I get through Cano, and we're back at uh, at A Rod once again. Gosh, 84 pitches. You got to admit, that's pretty good. 84 pitches in eight innings, but that's just the way the game goes. I don't think it really emulates that part in real life because it's not like I'm going to consistently throw balls or anything like that when I have the ability to aim like I do here in the game. So something that's not too realistic, but that's okay. Strike two on that slider. That's actually been Pettit's go-to pitch for most of the game. That slider is, is pretty awesome. Actually, I think it might be uh, his best pitch. Nope, I take that back. The cut fastball is. Uh, swing and a miss on the slider once again. Man. Anyway, I decide I got to sit down, Pettit. I'm going to bring in Sean Marshall because I want to get a fresh arm out there. I'm going to stay uh, going left-handed here in this one since it seems to have been working pretty well so far. I'd attribute the you know, last little bit of hitting here for the Yankees just from the fact that Andy Pettit's tired. And that's something that kind of weighs into how the computer figures what's going to happen. Anyway. Nick Swisher with a home run in the left field. That's another run for the Yankees. The Yankees are welcoming my pitchers to the game in a way that I don't like. Mark Teixeira getting a home run early on. Nick Swisher getting a home run right after I put Sean Marshall in. So that's another run. We're looking at 8-4 to four now as we are in the top of the... Or are we in the top of the ninth? I can't remember right now. That's just how mind-blowing this was here I totally forgot about this home run but dang that kind of uh, lowered my spirits a little bit here and I'm just re-watching it it was tough for me to be able to watch here anyway top of the ninth two outs Brett Gardner up all right going with the glitch and I learned it's okay I appreciate you guys uh, letting me know that yeah as long as uh, the batters in the batter's box it's okay for me to throw the pitch I don't feel too bad now <laughs> I'm gonna keep going with this glitch as long as I can you know, like I've been saying earlier, there's not too many glitches that kind of go in your favor. So I'll use that. Anyway, 0-1 pitch. Ends up being a ball, fastball, high. And now 
at this point in the game, I'm all right throwing a few balls here now and then because maybe I can get Marshall to swing at something kind of nasty outside, something he shouldn't. Kind of uh, see how his plate discipline is. Oh, man, that was a ball. Cut her inside. A lot of times that ends up being a strike. The one thing I'd like about this game, too, is if the umps were consistent on what they called as a strike or a ball, even if it was outside or inside by a little bit, see, that one ends up being a strike. That was farther away outside. Anyway, 12-6 curve. I love that pitch. All right, 2-2 two -two count. We're going to try and throw uh, maybe something high. I might throw the curveball, make it drop a little bit. End up going with the fastball. It's too high. So full count, two outs, top of the ninth. Whatever happens with this pitch, it's going to be huge. Going with the high. Oh, it drops down. 12-6 curve ends up getting the strike out here to end the game. Man. So game four is mine. So I lead the series 3-1 to one now. That means I have the opportunity to be able to win the World Series at home if I can get it in game five. Of course, you guys are going to have to watch. See what happens. Do I win it in game five or do I need a game six or a game seven to be able to do it? You guys are awesome. Thanks for watching. Go back and watch the other games if this is your first time looking at uh, this World Series that I've been doing here. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter. You guys know all that stuff. Anyway, again, you guys are awesome. I hope you have a good one.